Miles, yeah, how sorry, was your last uh, couple of weeks? How you doing, man? Good, good. Sorry for the impromptu road trip. You know, we lost, you know, unfortunately we lost last night and I got to get back up to get back up to Jupiter and my family and, you know, get ready for another, I feel like tomorrow will be my first day of spring training all over again. So, Miles, you're just driving home, right? Because you're from Jupiter. You were born in Jupiter. I mean, you've lived your whole life in Jupiter. Now you're a cardinal in Jupiter. I mean, you, yeah. you should have just stayed at home instead of staying in the hotel at Team USA. You would have been like, yeah, it's another game. <laughs> no, it's still a, it's still like a, like a hour and a half, two hour drive if you get some traffic. So I don't want to get, I don't want to get stuck in that, you know, especially late at night. So it's easier for me to just, you know, stay in the hotel. But we had some off days down here. We, I went back up with the family and, you know, get them all settled back in. My kids missed like almost the entire month of month of school because we were in Arizona and then this week is their spring break. So they've been really enjoying this too. And Miles, tell us about last night, like the atmosphere. I know you're disappointed you guys lost, but what was it like being on the field? What was the, the last at bat like? What were the guys like in the dugout? I mean, we're obviously disappointed, but after the game, did anybody talk, say anything, you know, that we need to hear about? Um, I mean, we'll start with, uh, you know, with the game that last inning. I thought I thought when McNeil walked, I thought we were going to get him. I thought we had him. Um, you know, I was I was smiling, getting ready to 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 go nuts. And then, you know, that that ground ball double play, double plays are always heartbreakers, you know, rally killers. And but that last at bat, I mean, if if I could trick myself into believing you could somehow rig an entire baseball tournament for one at bat for, for one pitch. I'd have believed that they somehow rigged it for, for that matchup at the end of the game. You know, like you said, full count, two outs, one run game, you know, your, your two way star and your, you know, MVP all-star guy, same team, like biggest faces in the game. You, you couldn't have, have planned it any better. And, it was just, it was fun to watch. And, you know, huge shout out to all the fans that came to all those games. The, the game against Mexico and Arizona, the game against Venezuela and Miami. I mean, the Cuba in, in the last night's game, the, the fans were electric and just made the whole thing so much fun. Um, you know, I think the World Baseball Classic took a step forward this year, you know, getting some, you know, more, you know, the, the, they got the best players in the world this year. Uh, for the most part, and I think it was great. Hey, Miles, um, question for you. I know you played over in Japan. Uh, what did you learn over there when uh, after you pitched there and came back to America, and did you um, help out any of the hitters, uh, explain to them what they might pitch here? And, and, you know, perfect example of, you know, Mike Trout at the end there, nasty curveballs, nasty uh, split-finger fastballs. So is there anything that you, you told the hitters at all? No, I mean, the, those hitters are – our lineup was so good. They're beyond any tips from <laughs> from a hitter like me. Um, and they had scouting reports on all those guys. I mean, obviously, Otani and Darvish are guys that they've seen before. And when you're when you're facing guys that you haven't seen before, you know, at the beginning of the game with um, the, the lefty and then they had some other relievers come in throwing real hard. I mean, anytime you face a guy with a good fastball that you've never seen before, I mean, that's tough. And to try to guess, the last thing I want to do is hitters like, hey, this is how they're going to pitch you, and then have it not work out like that, and then feel like it was my fault <laughs> somehow that they were they were looking for fastballs or looking for breaking balls. Um, the only thing I, I, I think I told the hitters was that if they could put some good swings on some of the younger – uh, younger pitchers from Team Japan, kind of like like with any team, you know, if you can put some good swings on on a young kid, you can kind of scare him out of the zone a little bit, and you know maybe maybe draw some walks, which I think we did after after Trey's home run early. I think he might have walked the next guy or had some trouble throwing strikes for a batter or two. But I mean that's that's a lot of young kids. You get a rookie in the game, put some good swings on, you can you can scare those guys out. Um. I mean, it's, they got so much talent on that team over there in Japan. I just wish more of those guys could, could come over here to the MLB. Yeah, no doubt. You uh, are you going to tell Rob Manford to piss off next time because he said in a he said in a some interview he said, yeah, I really like for 
you know, some of the better pitchers to come out here. You were the best pitcher for Team USA. You can, you're going to tell them to piss off because <laughs> you're like, dude, we got good pitchers. Like, I'm a boss. Like, I, like you. How do you how do you feel about that? How did you starting pitchers like everyone's like, oh, we need this guy, we need this guy. Like, look what I've done because you you carried the starting staff. I mean, you you can go up and down that that pitching staff and look at the accolades. I mean, there you know. There's all stars, Gold Glove winners. I mean, you know, Wayne Wright's resume speaks for itself. Um, regardless of what, you know, Rob Manfred wants. You know, the everyone wants to see the stuff guys that throw real hard. But we had a great pitching staff, and I think it it, it showed in that last game. I mean, against the Japanese, great lineup. You know, Cuba, Venezuela, those are great lineups. And you know, I thought I thought they want to see offense, right? I mean, doesn't. <laughs> Doesn't the, doesn't the league guys want to see more offense? Um, but, no, we had a great pitching staff. And, you know, yeah, there were guys that, you know, there were, were top-tier guys that didn't play for whatever reason, and their their teams won't let them play a lot of the time. So I don't know why why Manfred would be trying to knock on the players. He should be knocking on the teams for, for not letting them play. I know there's a, you know, there's a handful of guys, I won't name names, but, handful of guys that would have loved to play and their team said, you know, they politely said, we'd rather you not, which is their way of saying, no, you're not playing. Um, you know, young guys that are still under team control, you know, teams can kind of say, hey, that's not what we want you to do. And, you know, those young guys that aren't on contracts, they're kind of forced to listen to them. Um, but I don't think it really comes down to the players. I know there's a lot of guys that, that wanted to play that kind of couldn't. Miles, here's the one problem I have based on what you're saying. You Darvish might not be ready fully and stretched out for opening day based on what he just contributed in the WBC. And he just signed a big contract with the Padres. Like, he's putting it all out there. So I just, I'm just trying to balance who this is on. Because, like, clearly the Padres either were okay with it or he hung up the phone and said, I'm going to do what I want. Yeah, well, when you're a guy like Darvish, you can do that. But if you're a guy that's, you know maybe not even ARB eligible or your first year arbitration, it's a little harder for you to tell your team to go, um, you know, to go jump in the pool or whatever, you know, whatever analogy you want to make. It's, it's, it's tougher for a, a 25, 26-year-old guy to do that when, you know, if the Padres said, fine, you know, fine, you go do whatever you want, you know, that guy's, you know, he's already set for life. He doesn't have to worry about that. The, you know, the contract for him is, you know, it's more money in the bank, but he's not hes not trying to please someone looking for his first big payday. So there's definitely older guys that have some seniority that have the ability and the, you know, the savvy and the, the wherewithal to be able to tell a team, hey, this is what I'm doing. And, you know, ready or not, I'm doing it. And other other guys can't, you know, don't have that luxury. Hey, let me ask you about your teammates, Miles. Apparently there was an epic group chat. And I heard Kyle Tucker, who's not the loudest dude, had like the sneaky, amazing uh, gifs. So what kind of lifelong friends did you make? And, and can you give us any insight into this group chat? Um, I mean, the, I was, my, my main group chat was we had a good pitchers group chat. Um, you know, the, the, the hitters, had, I think the hitters had their own and the pitchers had their own group chat. I mean, it's fun to get. You know, it's fun to get to know everybody and kind of get their personalities. You know, we had the chat going before we all met. And then, so, like, once you meet, you kind of put a, a, a face to a name. But um, I think the, the, you know, the best part was not, you know, not like the, the text message, just being in the dugout with everybody, getting, you know, actual FaceTime and, you know, the, the dinners and the hanging out with guys, you know, in the locker room and during batting practice, uh, you know, getting to meet all these, all these other players. You know, and sometimes it's guys that you're meeting people that you play them during the season and you sit in the dugout and you're like, I don't like this guy. I don't like this guy for the other team. He's trying, they're trying to beat us. I don't like his, his swagger and I don't even like the way he jogs to first base. And then you meet these people in person. You're like, oh man, he's a great guy. He's telling jokes. He's funny. You know, you're having a beer with him at a dinner. You're cracking jokes. And then once the season starts, it's, it's going to be a process. You got to kind of, you know, you're going to see this. I'm going to see these guys step in the box. They're like kind of your friends now. So I got to see my friend get in the box or a guy that I know. 
and I got to flip the switch and be like, hey, I know this guy's pretty cool, but also I hate his guts right now. And Wait, who? Once who? he steps out of the box, we can be friends again. We can be friends again, but right now while he's in the box, who? we're not friends. Who? Who, Michael? Who, Miles? Who? Give us a name. Who was that guy for you? Um, Everybody from the Phillies. Phillies. <laughs> the Phillies. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, these guys. And it was funny. It was funny because uh, Wendell and I sat with them at the uh, at the first team dinner we had, and I hadn't really met anybody. Like we had been at the field, and we had like a little workout, and then we had our dinner. And I'm like, all, right, these guys, all they're gonna do is talk about beating us in the playoffs, and you know, no matter how long ago you lose in the playoffs, there's always that like, you know, it's bad taste in your mouth. And we're like three minutes into dinner, and we're laughing and having fun, and uh, you know, JT, uh, JT Kyle and, um, and Trey, they're just, you know, they're awesome dudes. Uh, Turner's a, a Palm Beach guy. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, stuff from down here in South Florida and, you know, Corver and JT like to get outdoors. They're like, you know, they like to fish and they golf and we all do the same things and we're, you know, laughing and having, you know, having a beer and, you know, they were just great. You know, they were great the whole time, you know, throwing at JT great great catcher watching Trey do his thing you know and and Schwarbs and hitting them hitting them home runs but like those are guys like man the Phillies they beat us I mean I was walking around the house in December just oh the Phillies <clears throat> you know still upset <laughs> and then you meet these guys and they're and they're great guys they're awesome people so so Miles so the Phillies had how many guys three guys on Team USA Turner Schwarber JT Cardinals yeah. had four, right? You, Wayno, Goldie, and Arna and Nolan. And, and Nada, yeah. So, are you guys America's team then, the Cardinals? Because you guys had the most players on Team USA. Is it the Phillies? You know, Schwarber, Trey Turner. They're hitting bombs. I mean, who, who's I, America's team? I mean, if you know, if you want to go by by players, you know, number of players, then that's the Cardinals. Um, if you want to take it a step further, I think the Cardinals had the most players in the WBC. We would be the the team of the world, the world's team, a team of the people. <laughs> so wait, are you gonna uh, so when you see when you see Newbar? To, let's say tomorrow at spring training, he's got his gold medal on. Are you gonna be like, damn you, I hate you now. You were my friend, now I hate you because you were the enemy. Like instead of the Phillies guys, or you're like, damn, he now better, we're friends. He, he better not bring that gold medal in the clubhouse tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he better. He better. If he has a pair on him, he. That thing better be hanging in your locker one day, Wayno's locker the next day, all there's, day. There's 18 other guys in that clubhouse that went to the WBC that didn't come back with a gold medal. It'd be a bold move for him to bring that thing in that oh. thing clubhouse. I'd hate, for it, I'd hate for it to go missing or, you know, you just don't want something to happen to it. You don't want to drop it, you know, in a, in a toilet or anything. Yeah. No, um. I think it'd be great for him to bring it in. I, you know, I'd, I'd like to see it. I've got, you know, I've got the silver medal. That's going to be something cool to put in the office. Not as cool as a gold medal, but um, it'll be nice to see. I wonder if it's real gold. Maybe we'll do like a like a test on it or something. The old, you know, the old bite test. Um, but it's great. I'm I'm super happy for him. I I know he had a great time. You know, how could you not um, playing with a with a great team? And I'm sure that's a great group of guys. Um, hope he learned something because you can always learn something from from playing with with different guys on different teams. So, and I hope he can bring that. You know, he's always bringing the intensity. So I know he's going to bring that intensity uh, right back to the Cardinals, and he's going to be ready for the season. Will you do it again? WBC? Yeah. I'll be. I mean, I'll be Wayno's age by the time it comes back around. So we'll just have to see if I'm still. Uh, if I'm still kicking it, maybe I'll be a coach or throwing BP or, you know, if it's down here in Miami, I'll just be some kind of, you know, I'll, I'll be a fishing liaison for guys on the off day. They can come up and <laughs> they can come up to Jupiter and fish on their off day. Wait, um, did, you just call, you know, did you call Wayno old? Did you oh, just call yeah. Wayno old? I'm just, I'm stating facts. Um, <laughs> he's, he's older, older than me. <laughs> and most of the most of the league, but he's uh he's aging with with beauty and with grace. Be beautifully so, stated, beautifully stated, yeah. Miles. Hey, let me go back to let me get a couple 
Cardinals questions in there before we let you okay. sail away here. So you said it's going to feel like you're heading back to spring training again for the first time. You have that, and you got to switch back to the rules. We were actually talking about how we felt like Japan's pitchers at times were lulling the hitters to sleep last night. Like I was doing the one, two. I got to 35, 40 pretty often on pitchers on the mound. We know that's all going away. You work pretty quick anyway, but is it going to be weird for you to go back to all the rules? You're going to look behind you. You can't shift the same way like what's been going on in the WBC. Um, I mean, it's it's been nice. I For me, the biggest thing, for me, the biggest thing is the between innings time. I think they, I think they got the between innings time wrong. I felt rushed in spring between innings because you used to get like two and a half minutes, and then the umpire would make you throw it down when that clock hit zero. Now you get like two and a half minutes, but they make you throw it down at like forty seconds or thirty seconds, so you really only have two minutes. And you got to jog out there. And I feel like sometimes in, in those spring games, I was only getting like five or six pitches instead of eight. I, was, I feel like I was getting a little bit less. Um, and I just don't know if that's going to be great early in the season. I mean, it's going to be cold in St. Louis and, you know, Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, Colorado. It's 40 degrees outside. And, you know, when it was, you know, when it's cold outside, traditionally, that umpire will give you some more time. You know, you go out there, it's cold, you take a few, you know, he, he might give you that, hey, you got two more. You say, oh, you know, hey, Bill, can I get four? And he'll be like, yeah, you know, you tell him it's cold, they'll give you more. They can't do that anymore. You're going to go out there, you're going to have a long a long inning, you know. We go to Milwaukee and Colorado early in the year. It's probably going to be like 50, 40 degrees, 50 degrees in Milwaukee. They don't have a heater in that stadium. It's indoors, but it's cold. Colorado could snow. You never know. Um you know, you you got a long inning. Your team scores a couple runs. You've been sitting on the bench. You got a jacket on, but then you got to run out there. It's 45, 50, whatever degrees. You got five pitches to warm up, and then you got a guy in the box. I just don't think it's. I don't think it's really smart. I think you you worry guys. You know, you're not going to get enough warm up pitches, and you don't want anyone to get hurt or anything like that. You know, it'd be terrible. Not giving guys time to get ready. But the in between pitches. Another second or two would be nice, but I work quick. I, I thought in the spring training games, the pitch clock didn't affect me much. I know they might be tweaking the rules because there were pitchers out there who were using it to their advantage, maybe a little a little too much, which I like a lot. If you're going to give me some rules, let me figure out how to use them to the, to the best of, of my ability. Um, but I'm not worried about the, the pitch clock and stuff. I like it. Get them in the box. Let's, let's get this game going. I like it. I like it. Hurry up. We don't get paid by the minute in Major League Baseball, so let's hurry these games up and just get in the box and swing at the first pitch and do what's going to happen and move on, right? But do you, think, so, um, do you remember back in the back when you were in the minor leagues, like your last game of the minor league season? Did you guys ever play the game where everyone <laughs> on the team used the same bat? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. You, you had to swing the at the first bat. pitch. You had to swing yeah. at the first strike. You got fined. Oh, yeah. The speed up rules the last yeah. game of the minor league season? <laughs> Dude, that game was like an we'll hour just, 20. We'll do, yeah, we'll just do that again. Swing at the first pitch. When you're done, just leave the bat. Everyone's got to use the same bat. That was always fun. It was always funny to see guys using different bats. Um, yeah. So, Wait, I didn't know about this, oh, though. Yeah. That's a thing still? I like, if know, I look still. at the games at the end of Maybe last not year? Now, but still used but to it be. was a thing? Like, every before, team would just be yeah. like, yo, last game, let's just. Dude, before the games are on, like, the internet and stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was like, let's hurry. Like, especially in like A ball and stuff. You're in Fort Wayne, Indiana. You're like, I got to go home. Let's get this game over as quick as possible. Both teams agree. This is the last game of the, the last season. Game. Both teams agreed. If you're yeah. there, there's nothing on the line, both teams are like, we're done. We're out. Yeah. So, yeah. Miles, Miles, are tell me about your Cardinals. Are they the, you guys, favorites to win the division? How many, how, by how many games do you think you guys are going to win the division? <laughs> Putting you on the spot. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, I think we've got the potential to, I think, maybe run away with it. Um, I think we could run away with the division if if we're all healthy and we're playing good ball. I mean, we got a returning MVP, and Arenado was, like, the runner-up, or he was, like, right there. We got, you know, two MVP candidates. We got, you know, Flaherty coming back healthy. Um, you know, the guy's got Cy Young stuff. We got Matt's being healthy. 
got some of the most incredible stuff I've ever seen. We got a full year of Montgomery. You know, we got Wayno who's going to be charging hard in that, you know, his that last season. You know, he's going to be balls to the wall, and I'm feeling good. We got a great bullpen. You know, Helsley really exploded last year. You got him and Hicks coming out. Hunter Monauer Heat. We got, you know, we got the outfield. We got the Japanese sensation, Lars Newbar. Um, <laughs> we got a chance to, to kind of run away with it. I mean, I think it'd be nice to, like, win a division by, like, 10 games, clinch early, and, and really get set and, you know, settled in and ready for a nice, nice big playoff run. I like the maybe. I like the maybe. You know, puff, like, as we say on the show, puff your chest out, dude, and say, <laughs> We're going to win this division by 10 games. Bring it on, Milwaukee. <laughs> Bring it on, Cubby Bears. Let's go. We got this. Baseball, I mean, you know, as good as that, you know, baseball's a wild, baseball's a wild game. And, you know, I'm really confident. I, I, I love our team. Um, I think, I, I do think we're going to win the division. And I, I think we can do it by a, a lot of games. But the Brewers have a great pitching staff. They're a good team. You know, the Cubs made some moves. They got some new pitchers. Fight. They got some good young players. The Pirates got some good young players. You know, baseball's baseball. You never know. And we're playing everyone this year. I don't know if that's going to make a difference, playing playing everybody in the league, traveling more, not playing in the division as much. Um, not as many games in the division. It might be harder to win a division by by 10 or 15 games because you're not able to, to kind of run up those those victories on those on those weaker teams in the division. So I think it could make for for tighter races across the league, um, which would be a, which would be an interesting side effect of of playing everybody. What uh what kind of effect is how many wins you think is it going to affect that Yachty's not back there? I know I know you know you guys are set behind the dish. I'm not saying anything against against him. I'm saying more of like that presence of a guy at the position that he's at. Catcher. That's yeah, I mean that's. Losing a guy like Yachty is is not easy for for any team or anybody. Um, you know, the good news is is that we got Contreras and he's great back there. He's got a great arm. He's, he's you know he's going to be picking guys, going to be throwing you know throwing guys out. Um, I throw it to him a little bit. He calls a good game. I mean, he's got a bat. He can swing it. Um, but aside from the baseball aspect, I mean, you're you're losing a a Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer is hard to replace, no matter how you slice it. Uh, but, you know, re- replacing him in the clubhouse is also tough. But the good news on that front is we've got Goldie and Arenado. We've got veteran presence. We still have Wayno and his sage wisdom, you know, to kind of help the pitching staff, which is good because, you know, Yachty helps the helps the pitching staff tremendously, but we still have Wayno there. And, and Wayno and Yachty were – you know, they're the same person. They, they, they've been together so long. They were, they're, you know, they were brothers. They were, you know, they're the same guy. So Wayno has a lot of that, a lot of that information and, and a lot of that leadership quality as well. And, you know, how much we miss them is only going to, only time is, is, is really going to tell. But it's time for other guys to step up and, and take on a leadership role. I think, I think Wilson can do that. <clears throat> He's a great guy, a tremendous person. I think he can take on some, some leadership role as a catcher, helping helping the helping the pitchers out, and and you know helping the offense get going. And I think it'll be it'll be maybe tough at first, but I think we'll we'll you know we'll find a way and we'll do our best to lure Yachty to St. Louis for a couple of series, maybe maybe see if he'll stop in and hang out a little bit with the guys, and we'll see. Hey, hey Miles, before we let you go. First of all, you better do this often during the year because you're a great interview, and except for your driving sucks because you're swerving, <laughs> and you're in the left lane, you're passing guys in the emergency lane. So you got to work on your driving. Your interview is great, but you know damn well, and I'm telling you this right now, you're talking good about Wilson Contreras, but he was on the Cubs. He was that Phillies guy you were talking about in the WBC that you were like, man, I hate this dude because he played with fire. And don't and, 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 and So you're lying because now he's on your team. You're like, man, I like this guy because he's on my team. That's, I mean, he's, you know, that, that, but especially on the Cubs, you know how it is. Guys on the Cubs, I don't care if this guy saved a bunch of puppies from a burning building on his way to the field. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a, 
Cardinal now, so he's the best guy ever. <laughs> Sweet, like you wouldn't believe. You know, sweet as can be. And uh and we love him already. <laughs> Perfect answer. Perfect answer. Perfectly stated. Miles, this was awesome, man. Hey, enjoy the rest of the ride home. Thanks for uh joining us and also um what a what a couple uh, weeks, man. Next time I'll make sure I'm not driving. Maybe uh maybe I'll be out on my boat instead. We'll see. Hell yeah. You yeah, can come on AJ's yeah. boat. Come yeah, to Orlando. Call me. I'd love to go snook fishing, especially in Jupiter Inlet. Hey, what whatever you're down in the in the Palm Beach area in the off season, I'm fishing one or two days a week, always looking for guys that know what they're doing. I'll take you I'll take you golfing, you can take me fishing. How's that? Sounds good. It's a deal. Done. Done. Miles, yeah, we'll get you on next time. Computer, Wi Fi, the whole thing. Thanks, man. We'll see you in a few weeks, all right? Thank you so much for having me on, guys. Appreciate you.